This is Twit. So Wayne Westerman was also someone who was uh, a pioneer of multi-touch, and Apple wouldn't let you talk to him. So tell us how you got his story. Well, yeah, I mean, Apple wouldn't let me talk to anybody. Uh, so I, uh, you know, was sort of persistent, and I found other ways around it. I, I did uh, track down his sister, uh, who lives in, in Minnesota now, I believe, uh, and they she was a little bit older than him. So she was kind of in, in some ways, um, a mother figure in a lot of ways. Cause his mother had, uh, had, uh, had, had some disabilities, uh, which did run in their family, which he himself inherited. So he had pretty severe tendinitis and hand disabilities, which is why he ended up pioneering a lot of this multi-touch technology that really does that. Now you can trace this in this case, um, Wayne Westerman, who uh, was trying to write his PhD, uh, was trying to use computers um, a lot back in the late 90s, really just he couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. So he had to pioneer another way. Just using keyboards was too repetitive. The, the strain of hitting the keys over and over really melted his hands down He and since he had this disability. So it was kind of out of necessity. Uh, that he pioneered this system called Fingerworks that would allow him to sub out some of the the, the keystrokes, sub out some of the repetition, sub out some of the, um, the 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 things that were hurting his hand, and he came up with Fingerworks, this opaque pad that you know through again a little bit of serendipity, quite literally wound up in Apple's uh, design labs just at the same time when a group of uh, engineers, designers, programmers were really embarking on these experimental discussions about where they wanted to take input um, and sort of the the interaction paradigm of computers next. And sure enough, they said, this is interesting. This fingerworks pad that Wayne Westerman had made to alleviate finger stress wound up becoming the center of a series of investigations by the team that would ultimately create the iPhone. And does Westerman still work at Apple or had he signed an NDA that said he would never talk to anyone? No, he's still at Apple. Um, as far as I know, yeah, he is a, uh, uh, sort of in charge of, of, of multi-touch technologies, sensor technologies. Um, he very much disappeared beneath the, the, the Apple curtain. Um, and that, you know, it, it actually was very upsetting to a lot of people because this product that he had made really was helping computer users that had RSI, repetitive strain injuries, that had tendinitis or arthritis. It was, for them, one of the only products on the market that could let them use computers the same way everyone else did. So, of course, when Apple bought the technology after deciding that it sure enough was going to be the foundation for their next um sort of product paradigm. They bought it and they shut down Fingerworks and all of their product lines went were, went dead. All of the help forums went dark and a lot of people were outraged. They really thought that Apple had taken away this product that was integral to their lives. That was really interesting to see these sort of side stories that kind of aren't commonly thought of as the iPhone narrative, but that was a small, you know, it was a few thousand people. And now the iPhone's used by billions of people. Um, But it is interesting that there are these, these sort of um, byproducts, these sort of, you know, unintended consequences. And it should be said in the same breath that the iPhone is actually great for accessibility. It, uh, a lot of people who are um, visually impaired and, and hearing impaired can do a lot of really neat stuff with the iPhone. Um, And the, the, so there's trade-offs everywhere. Mm-hmm, absolutely.